The governing equations of fluid flow can be written in two forms, the differential form and the integral form. These two forms are complementary and you can go from the differential form to the integral form and vice versa. Over the years, working with ANSYS Fluent and advising students who are using ANSYS Fluent, I've realized that it's very important for the CFD code user to know the differential form and the integral form and how to go from one to the other. In the differential form, we apply the fundamental laws to an infinitesimal fluid particle. So I'm talking about the differential form here. And the fluid particle is, is an abstraction, and you can think of it as, as a clump of fluid or a chunk of fluid. And infinitesimal means that it's vanishingly small. So if I have flow between two parallel plates, um, this is a flow we look at in, in ANSYS Fluent, and we have flow coming in here and flow going out here, and we follow an infinitesimal fluid particle going through the, um, through the flow domain, and if we blow up that fluid particle, okay, we say its uh, dimensions are delta x and delta y. And infinitesimal means that we are looking in the limit as delta x tends to 0 and delta y tends to 0. But delta x and delta y can never be 0 because the whole framework falls apart. As we have seen you know, when we're talking about derivation of the heat conduction equation, for instance. So this is an idea that comes, comes over and over again in solid mechanics and heat transfer in fluid dynamics, where you, you consider something very small um, that's vanishingly small, but it can never be zero. And then you apply the conservation of mass and conservation of momentum to this infinitesimal fluid particle, and you will get the differential form. In contrast, in the integral form, you apply the fundamental laws, conservation of mass and conservation of momentum, to a finite volume in the flow domain. So if I have my channel and you know I mark off the the inlet and the outlet so essentially I've defined a volume like that so this is a two-dimensional view of the volume so let me draw that out I can say that the mass coming in plus the mass accumulating should be equal to the mass going out. That's kind of an aggregate view of mass conservation. And if there is no mass accumulating within this volume, then the mass going out should be equal to the mass coming in. And this is called a control volume, and it's picked by the user. And you can, in fact, the integral form, you can apply to any arbitrary shaped control volume within the flow domain. If I had the exact solution to the governing equations, it would satisfy the integral form for this control volume and for this control volume, for any other control volume that I can draw within the flow domain. It would also satisfy the differential form of the of the governing equations. We'll first take a look at the differential form of the governing equations and then move on to the integral form of the governing equations.